good morning everyone uh, i'm arushi uh, and i'm going to talk about our result on round optimal secure multi party computation with honest majority uh, this is joint work with my co-authors prabhanjan anand arka rai choudhury and abhishek jain so first let me start by describing the setting of uh, multi party computation so we have a group of parties each with their private individual inputs and they wish to securely compute a joint function over these inputs and what do we mean by securely computing a function uh, it essentially means that an adversary who can corrupt a subset of these parties should not be able to learn anything Uh, about the inputs of the honest parties beyond what is already revealed by the output of the function uh, our focus here is mainly on the honest majority setting uh, where the adversary is allowed to corrupt up to t less than n by 2 parties uh, honest majority mpc has been studied since the 80s and there are a couple of reasons that make it an interesting area of study So firstly uh, oblivious transfer is not necessary for achieving honest majority mpc also uh, it allows for stronger security notions such as fairness and guaranteed output delivery which are uh, impossible to achieve in the dishonest majority setting um, i i will talk about uh, these security notions in more detail in in a while Uh, also uh, uc security is achievable in the honest majority setting without uh, any additional trusted setups uh, one of the primary focuses of this talk is on the round complexity and interestingly enough the round complexity lower bounds of the dishonest majority setting do not apply here okay so what what is the question that we are interested in we are interested in the exact round complexity of honest majority mpc in the plane model and to make this question a little more concrete let me start by uh, talking uh, about the various security notions that we have in this setting so first we have security with a bot which is the most well studied notion where the adversary can learn the output but it can prevent the honest parties from learning the output by uh, aborting prematurely next we have the strongest uh, security notion called a uh, guaranteed output delivery where no matter what the adversary cannot prevent the honest parties from learning the output uh, a relaxation of this uh, notion called fairness guarantees that either all parties learn the output or or nobody learns the output uh, and clearly guaranteed output delivery implies fairness so uh, our goal here is to develop round optimal protocols in the honest majority settings for each of these security notions Uh, and we'll consider both uh, semi honest and malicious adversaries okay so let me start by giving an overview of what is already known in this area so feasibility results for security with a bot were already established in the 80s and these uh, protocols gave us uh, pol uh, polynomial round protocols uh, then later in in 1990 uh, beaver mikali and rogoway Uh, initiated the study of constant round protocols and since then there have been several uh, works improving over these results but due to lack of time i'll skip over to just two round protocols so in two round protocols uh, ishai et al uh, constructed two round unconditionally secure protocol for uh, t less than n by 3 corruptions and more recently uh, in eurocrypt 2017 uh, beno modalin and garg srinivasan uh, constructed two round dishonest majority protocols their uh, semi honest protocols were based on ot and the malicious protocols were in the crs model and so based on these state of the art results we ask the following question does there exist a two round uh, mpc protocol uh, in the honest majority setting for malicious corruptions in the plain model uh one things to note here are uh, that this question was open regardless of assumptions moreover we know that two round uh, protocols in the dishonest majority setting are impossible to achieve and in fact this question was open in the semi honest case uh, if we seek assumptions weaker than ot okay so uh, moving on to uh, what is known for guaranteed output delivery again for guaranteed output delivery the feasibility results were already established in the 80s 
And I'm going to skip over uh, a large body of intermediate results and move on to the, uh, through the results that consider exact round complexity. So starting with the work of Ishai et al, who constructed two round protocols for guaranteed output delivery for a single malicious corruption. Uh, and more recently, uh, Gordon et al constructed three round uh, maliciously secure protocols that achieve guaranteed output, del output delivery in the CRS setting uh, from LWE and NISIX. Uh, for lower rounds, uh, for lower bounds, uh, Genero et al showed that uh, two round protocols with T greater than two malicious corruptions are impossible in two rounds. Um, and again, more recently, Gordon et al extended their result to show that uh, two round broadcast channel protocols with guaranteed output delivery are impossible to achieve even against fail stop adversaries. So given these works, we ask the following natural questions. First, does there exist a two round MPC for T less than N by two uh, fail stop corruptions in the plane model? And in the malicious setting, we ask if there exists a three round protocol that is secure against T less than N by two malicious corruptions in the plane model. And know that both these questions are open regardless of assumptions. And moreover, from the previous results, we know that uh, if, if there exists uh, a two round protocol against, that is secure against fail stop corruptions, that protocol must use both private channels and broadcast channels. Okay, so I, 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 I'm going to proceed to our results now. For security with a bot, we show that there exists a two round uh, protocol for general functionalities in the plane model, assuming only one way functions. Uh, and all known uh, constant round approaches, including ours, is based on randomized encodings. Uh, and uh, currently, random information theoretic randomized encodings are only known uh, for NC1 circuits. So based on our current uh, understanding of randomized encodings, it seems like for general functionalities, this might be the best that we can hope for. For guaranteed output delivery, we get the following uh, two round protocols for general functionalities again. So we get a broadcast channel protocol in the bare public key model, uh, and this is assuming public key encryption. And uh, in the point to point channel case, we get a two round protocol in the plane model assuming OT. If we allow an extra round, we can in fact get a three round protocol uh, uh, secure against fail stop corruptions in the plane model assuming only one-way functions. Uh, for malicious corruptions, we get a three-round protocol in the broadcast channel, uh, 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 using broadcast channels uh, in the plane model, assuming zaps and public key encryption. OK, so let, let me now give uh, an overview of our techniques, uh, starting with our two-round maliciously secure protocol uh, that achieves security with a bot. So our starting point uh, is the recent work of Gurg Srinivasan, who gave uh, a compiler to obtain a two-round protocol from any polynomial round protocol using two-round OT. And our starting idea here is to try and leverage uh, the fact that we are in the honest majority setting and get rid of OT. OK, so to proceed with this approach, let me first start by listing where OT is used in their protocol. So they start with a two round, uh, sorry, a polynomial round dishonest majority protocol over broadcast channels. And note that in the dishonest majority setting, such protocols are only known from OT. And then they use OT and garble circuits to compress the round complexity of this protocol to obtain a two round protocol. OK, so our strategy here is to first start with uh, an unconditionally secure honest majority protocol. And uh, note that uh, such honest majority protocols from assumptions weaker than public key encryption require the use of private channels. But unfortunately, the JS compiler only gives us a way to compile or compress the round complexity of broadcast channel protocols. Therefore, our first challenge here is to try and modify the JS compiler in order to obtain, in order to enable a compression of private channel protocols. And our second challenge here is to leverage honest majority and achieve OT functionality without actually using OT. OK, so let me first give a recap of their work. Uh, so they start with a, a polynomial round dishonest majority protocol over broadcast channels and 
transform it into a conforming protocol uh, that has a very specific uh, syntactic structure. Uh, it consists of a preprocessing phase and a computation phase. Okay, so uh, in the computation phase, only a single party is uh, allowed to speak in each round. Uh, this particular party acts as the speaker for the round, and all other parties act as listener parties. And only uh, a single bit can be communicated in each round of this computation phase. Finally, they use OT and garble circuits to compress the round complexity of this conforming protocol to get a two-round protocol. And in the first round of this compressed uh, two-round protocol, uh, uh, parties send their messages that they send in the pre-processing phase along with OT1 receiver messages. So each speaker party from the computation phase sends OT receiver messages in the first round. And these OT receiver messages somehow commit to all their subsequent actions in the first round itself. Then in the second round, each party sends a series of uh, garble circuits, one for each round of the computation phase. And these garble circuits output OT sender messages, and these OT sender messages uh, are used to deliver wire labels for the next garble circuit. OK, so now let's try to solve our second challenge first, which is, to which is on achieving OT functionality without actually using OT, for which we devised this new gadget that we call multi-party OT. Um, as the name suggests, this is a multi-party protocol. Uh, where only two parties have inputs and all other parties have no inputs, but all parties learn the output. And uh, an OT functionality with sender inputs M0, M1, and the receiver input B can be uh, viewed as a degree two polynomial of the following form. Okay, I, I will talk about how we can construct such a protocol and its security later, but for now, let's try to use this new gadget to solve our first challenge which is on compressing private channel protocols. So in order to compress a protocol that uses both broadcast and private channels, uh, we add an additional setup phase where the parties exchange one-time pads to emulate private channel protocols in subsequent rounds. And so now all the remaining rounds can be executed over broadcast channels. We now use the, com the GS compiler to transform this into a conforming protocol with the preprocessing phase and the computation phase. The only difference here is that we have an additional setup phase. And now we finally want to compress the round complexity of this protocol in to get a two round protocol in the plane model. But unfortunately, the GS compiler only gives us a way to compress the preprocessing phase and the computation phase. The setup phase still remains intact. So our natural next step is to somehow try and parallelize the setup phase and the first round uh, of this protocol. So let's see if we can do that with our uh, new gadget. So in the conforming protocol uh, with setup, uh, let's say the listener of round T from the computation phase chooses, chooses a random pad R and sends it across to the speaker of that round. Then later in round T of the computation phase, uh, this particular, uh, the speaker uh, encrypts the message using this random pad and broadcasts it over a broadcast channel. Now when we transform this into a two round protocol with setup, the speaker party of round T is expected to broadcast its OT receiver message in the first round. And recall that in the GS compiler, this OT message is somehow supposed to commit to all its actions in the subsequent rounds. And now that this action in round T depends on R, this OT1 message must also depend on the random pad R. But unfortunately, this random pad R is unknown to the speaker uh, before the setup round phase. So clearly this strategy doesn't work here. But what if we try to work it the other way around and have the speaker uh, exchange the random pad? Now note that the, the listener of round T will act as a speaker in some future round. And there it might have to decrypt this message that it received in the Th round using this message R, which means that its, its action in that particular round will depend on this uh, random pad R. 
Uh, and since this particular listener is also expected to commit to all its actions in the first round itself, the same problem arises. The listener doesn't know what this value of R is before the setup phase. So we've essentially just transferred this problem to another round and not managed to solve it yet. Uh, so these approaches clearly don't work. We potentially need a stronger property from our OT primitive, which is why we devise uh, this new primitive that we call multi-party homomorphic OT. Uh, this is also a multi-party pr primitive, uh, with the only difference that instead of just two parties, three parties have inputs here. So apart from the sender and the receiver, there is a designated sender with an input R. And the output of this multi-party homomorphic OT uh, is the bit MB plus R. And similar to our regular OT functionality, the multi-party OT functionality can also be viewed as a degree two polynomial in F2 of the following form. OK, so now I, I will again talk about how we can construct this particular primitive and its security in more detail later. But for now, let's see if this helps us in parallelizing the, the setup phase and the first round. OK, so uh, in the first round, the speaker of round T is expected to broadcast an OT message, uh, OT receiver message uh, to be specific. And uh, we can actually now use the homomorphic property of our multi-party homomorphic OT and split the OT receiver message. Uh, the listener of round T also broadcasts an OT message using its input R, which is already known to him at the time of the setup phase. And so now the message that the speaker of round T has to send in the first round does not depend on the random pad R. And this message only depends on uh, the information that it already has before the setup phase. Therefore, we are able to uh, parallelize the setup phase and the first round uh, of this protocol, and, and we get a two-round protocol in the plane model. OK, so now uh, moving on to how we can instantiate this particular primitive. So uh, Ishai, Kushalevitz, and Paskin in, in 2010 gave a construction to construct such two-round protocols for uh, these degree two polynomial computations. The only issue is that uh, their protocol only satisfies privacy with knowledge of outputs. Uh, privacy with knowledge of outputs is uh, a weaker variant of security with a bot. Uh, so the ideal uh, world for privacy with knowledge of outputs looks something like this. So each party sends its uh, private inputs to the trusted party. The trusted party then computes uh, the function over these inputs and sends it to the adversary. The adversary can then arbitrarily choose what output it wants to force onto the honest parties and sends it to the trusted party. The trusted party then forwards uh, this uh, output to the honest parties. And clearly, this is a weaker variant than security with a bot since uh, correctness of output for the, guaranteed, uh, for the uh, honest parties is not guaranteed anymore. Uh, but since we want to uh, obtain uh, or achieve security with a bot, how do we ensure correctness of outputs for the honest parties? OK, so going back to the ideal world for uh, privacy with knowledge of outputs, if we look at our OT functionality, the output that the adversary receives uh, in this case is one of the input bits of the sender, while the other uh, input bit remains completely hidden. Therefore, the, the message Y prime, that's the output that it wants to force onto the honest parties, is completely independent of the other uh, sender input bit. Again, uh, recall that the OT functionality in, in, in this protocol is used only for transmitting the garble circuit via labels. And from the security of uh, garble circuits, we know that uh, unless valid via labels are used, garble circuits cannot be evaluated. So, so this means that either the honest parties learn the correct output, or they don't receive any output at all, which is security with a bot and is essentially what we wanted to achieve in the first place. Uh, unfortunately, I won't have time to go over our protocols for the guaranteed output delivery, but uh, you can take a look at our ePrint version for more details on this construction and our other protocols for guaranteed output delivery. Thank you. Thank you.